Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. Hey, what's up, Reefers? By the time you're watching this, I am driving to New York for my birthday, as well as meeting up with some friends who are back in town for the holidays. Uh, so this is gonna be a really quick weekday fresh water update. All right, Reefers, as you can see, some of the things have changed in this tank, uh, even as it's going through the uh, dry start period. But it's kind of hard to see what's going on inside because there's a saran wrap at the top as well as condensation in the front. But don't worry, right after I do a quick walk around, I'm gonna take off the saran wrap and kind of wipe down the front for you guys. Uh, so, But I, I plan to re-wet it anyway, so that's uh, not a big deal. Uh, so here's a really quick around. And I also want to show uh, the moisture in the soil so I can get some feedback on whether that's enough water especially the, the back where the substrate is a lot deeper so I left a uh, actually two airflow holes in the back uh, as recommended by some of you guys uh, in, in order to prevent mold and I hope that's enough but once in a while, I still kind of take off the entire saran wrap and change in the new one, uh, which I'm going to do a little bit later. So this is actually the perfect chance to film for you guys. This way I can take this off and you guys can get a really good look of how the tank looks right at this moment. All right, so if you guys will excuse me for a second, let me go ahead and take the saran wrap off and I'll be right back. All right, guys, here is the new rock work for the nine gallon planted tank. Now, first of all, thank you so much for your feedback. Uh, a lot of them are super helpful. And I'll, I'll go down the list real quick on what I changed. Uh, the most obvious change is I added more rocks. Now, when I was shopping for rocks, I realized that I did not have enough. Essentially, the piece in the back, that's the only piece that I really use from the, from the ones I purchased uh, from House of Tropicals. Uh, last week, I swung by Congressional Aquarium and I was able to find these two pieces of rock that I thought looks really good and they're about the same size, so I thought they would work. Uh, so I got those. And then I also found this piece. Although this piece of rock is not, I don't think it's exactly the same as the other one. This has like a stripe, it's like a zebra stripe. Um, but I feel like they're close enough for now. Down the road, I'm gonna try to find uh, something else to replace that. But for now, this works a lot better than before because one of you guys mentioned that once the carpet grows out, right, all the rock is gonna lose its impact by a lot. Uh, so I thought about it. I feel like that makes perfect sense. I feel like once the carpet grows out, this is gonna get a little but good portion is gonna get covered. So I might as well get something a little bit larger and that's the reason why I went with that. Now, if you look really carefully, I look at this, I was like, wait a minute, that looks like the Lion King rock, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> low key, maybe I'm gonna put like a Lion King little figure up there just to mess around. Uh, so this is what it looks like right now. I feel like it's a lot more impactful. Let me just do a quick walk around. And I'm really liking it a lot better. So thank you so much guys for um, recommending me adding more rock. And I was doing more reading. People all said that like for newbies like me, right? People who just started out playing the tank. One of the number one issues is that they do not add enough hardscape. And that's absolutely true. I thought it's enough until I put more in and it looks a lot better. The contrast is so much more. Because before I feel like the tank dominates the content when it was just like one piece of rock right there. <clears throat> and then now I think we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. I feel like now the content is the focus versus the tank itself. So now I feel like, okay, this is kind of like the focus. So I, I like this a lot better. Thank you again for everybody who recommend me adding more rock. I think you guys are spot on. Now, the other thing that, a couple things I picked up on in the comment section in the last video, I read all the comments, uh, is that I did not know ADA soil or aqua soil, they make a smaller grain size. I did not know that. If I had known, I would have gone for that as well because uh, number one, they, uh, sorry, I forgot your name. I should have checked it first. Uh, I say that number one, the uh, carpeting plants, the HC, uh, they would grow a lot better in the smaller green size. And number two, uh, the proportion will look more appropriate because right now you see the grain looks really large. So it makes the whole thing look a little bit, it kind of like break the illusion that this is a larger tank than it really is. This is a nine gallon versus if I use smaller green size that will match the, uh, the size of the leaves a little better. Uh, but I'm hoping that in the future, if things goes well, these will all be carpeted anyway, so it's not as much of an um, eyesore as it may be right now. So that's that. Now the other thing that uh, some of you guys picked up is that maybe 
uh, over time, this is gonna get flattened out. Right now, you see how I built in the hill. So uh, some people mentioned that over time, it's kind of hard to maintain this if you don't kind of pack them with uh, rocks to kind of hold them in place. I'll put rocks underneath to hold them, hold the shape. Uh, they may have a tendency to flatten out. Um, I'm crossing my fingers that as these carpet plants kind of grow out, the root, the root system kind of hold, hold these things, hold these uh, substrate in place, kind of like uh, to avoid a landslide. A lot of people, the government plant trees, right? So I'm hoping for something like that. I'm not sure if that's gonna work, probably is not. Uh, but that's what I'm hoping for because I really don't want to like just tear everything up and redo the whole thing. Another thing I, did, I picked up on, and some of you guys recommended, is that the ADA aqua soil, while it's really good, it may not be, 100% perfect substrate. Um, some people recommended adding like lava rock and stuff like that underneath it. Uh, and again, I mean, I don't want to tear up the whole thing. <laughs> so for my next build, right? For my next build, which I'm sure is going to happen at some point, I'm going to take all these feedback, all these fantastic feedback that you gave me, and then I'm going to do it the other way. So right now I'm just going to run with this and see uh, how far I can take this. And then I'm going to, do the more appropriate way because honestly, I don't I don't want to go for like tearing this down and then um, re replanting everything. Another really great feedback is that um, I should build the back a lot taller and the front a lot lower. Uh, and the reason I did this is because I I, I remember seeing a couple of videos uh, and the front was pretty high in those videos. Even although, like to be fair, in those videos the front seems to be pretty pretty even, so there's no slope like this. Uh, but they were a decent, a decent depth, so I thought that's the proper things to do. But uh, as I start watching more and more videos, I noticed a lot of them have really uh, low substrate level. And some of you guys commented that maybe I should um, build the back up a little bit taller, so that it has a more uh, three-dimensional look, more depth. So right now, if I, you're kind of looking at it straight on like this. So I have a little bit, it would be cool to build a little bit higher, but at the same time, I feel like if I build the back too high, you lose the impact of these rocks because they don't seem to sit as high up now. Um, so I don't know, um, I could make it higher, but I feel like, let's, let's see what happens. Uh, later on, I can always just add more substrate and kind of move things up a little bit. And I think I try to do is kind of like shape the valley a little bit. Unfortunately, it's already losing a little bit of a shape. Uh, basically, I want the back to be really, uh, it's more contrasty, like I, I wish it was a little bit lower, right? So it's a little more contrast and kind of gradual slope as it turned this way. Uh, but it's losing a little bit of that effect. But again, this is my fir first uh, planted aquarium built. So I want to just go with it first, see how it goes, get some learning pain. And as I get more experience uh, through doing this and through listening to you guys, uh, the next build will just getting better and better. So one little concern I have is that I noticed some of the leaves uh, turning a little yellow. Now I'm not sure if that was there before or if it's new or if this is like a normal part of the process as I start growing these um, dwarf baby tears outside of water. Because uh, you know how people are saying that uh, once I flood the tank there will be a little dieback? And since, since these started out as uh, immersed growth, like they grew underwater. I'm sorry, not immersed, uh, summer, is it summers? Dude, you guys, uh, correct me. Tell me, tell me which is which. I'll look it up later after this. But anyways, these were grown underwater. And as I take them out of the water and grow in this environment, I wonder if these yellow leaves is a result of the dieback or if I'm doing something wrong. I don't know, let me know. I'm a total newbie when it comes to a uh, planted aquarium. In terms of light, I'm running, Initially, I was only running like eight hours, uh, but then uh, some of you guys say that uh, for a dry start, you can just run it 100%, like 24 hours a day. I thought that's a, maybe, maybe a little bit extreme, so I think right now I'm doing uh, 8 a.m. to midnight. So that's already a pretty big step up, and I think I'm running at 80%, uh, not 100 yet. So we'll see how it goes. I may crank it up a little bit more, uh, depending on how the plants react to this. Um, okay, so in terms of like, uh, I, I'm starting a shop for what happens uh, when after I flood the tank. So right now we are about two weeks in. I plan to add water to the tank at about six or seven weeks if things seem to look good. Uh, at that, I already have a Eheim 2211, which also which is also known as the uh, classic 150. Uh, that should be coming this Friday. 
and I ordered a, uh, a set of glass lily pipes from Hong Kong actually um, and they should be here I think end of January which is about the same time that uh, the tank should be ready for it to be flooded so that's exciting but at the moment I still have no clue what to do in terms of uh, CO2 I'm talking to uh, a couple friends uh, about like what is the best way to go about it it sounds like there are a couple of nice options uh, so thank you so much for the guys that are helping me out in this endeavor I'm um, trying to like compile all the information and just try to find out like what makes sense for this build uh, and what I what I want to like try out and again I know like some of these some of the methods they may not be like um, top of the top best advice uh, best way to go about it because I already have some false start like for example the, uh, the substrate size may not be optimal uh, but I feel like it's important to do something versus just kind of read about it all the time um, so in this case uh, <laughs> even though the start may not be 100% proper but uh, I'm just glad that I got started I got that and I'm really glad that because of the mistake I make I started getting all these like really nice personalized information uh, specific to this build and I'm seriously I'm learning so much I'm so dude this like the the feedback from you guys the comments from the, the emails and stuff like that I learned so much through that than like just reading a web page or watching a YouTube video because all these are super applicable to what I am dealing with right now and I can really relate to the information you're trying to tell me and there's just like no replacing like personal personalized customized advice you know and I understand that <clears throat> different people do things differently. Uh, for example, some of the people told they may told me tell me like contradicting things from one person to another, and from there I'm gonna just kind of use my best judgment, try to see what makes the most sense, and then I'll do like some cross references and stuff like that. So, but I, I do see every side. I do I'm I'm starting to understand like why people do certain things versus it's just like a recipe before, right? Now I understand. Oh, that's why they recommend this. Oh, that's why uh, this guy was saying that this. So so this is great. I'm having a lot of fun, guys. All right, guys, um, <laughs> I said it's going to be a short video, but this is still going to be like 11 or 12, 12, 12 minutes long. All right, well, I'm going to end it right here. So this is my weekday freshwater tank, up tank updates. Uh, hope you enjoy it. I know a lot of uh, you guys are probably not freshwater keeper uh, that's following my channel. Um, so thank you for being open to something that's a little bit different than your regular programming. Uh, I will keep my every day, every week Sunday uh, update to saltwater, but I do plan to maybe during the weekday uh, slip in some of these uh, freshwater tank updates, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, as you're finishing this up, if you are one of the notification squad, I should still be in the car driving towards New York right now. I'm most likely on the New Jersey Turnpike at this moment. Uh, it's gonna be a short stop in New York. I'll be leaving tomorrow. Basically, I'm just here in New York to uh, you know just hang out and also like in, I'm gonna check out the uh, Fifth Avenue. I believe they always have like really nice light shows, um, and they always have like awesome. Uh, Windows, Windows display at, at the mall and stuff like that. And also, I kind of want to go ice skating in front of the uh, Rockefeller Center. Dude, I sound like a girl, don't I? <laughs> Alright guys, enjoy the holidays with your friends and family. Be nice to people. It is that special time of the year where we can, extra be, we can be extra nice without looking a little bit awkward or creepy because it's kind of, uh, it's just like a season to do nice things. All right, with that said, guys, have an excellent, excellent week until I see you Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And be sure to tune in to Sunday at 9.30 a.m. It's going to be a fun one. All right, see you guys. First of all, thank you, Richard, for inviting me to talk about my tank uh, with Restock. That. <laughs>